okay, adults, we're supposed to be adulting in front of our kids. You will see in the carpool lane, people who don't pull up, even though there's like eight car spaces, or who flat out park in the carpool drop-off lane when there are pure signs up and down that say, do not park, please pull up. And it's like this hilarious thing that you see play out. It's like the same thing on airplanes when people are just all like making a mad dash for the front door. It's just like patience, people. And what are we showing our kiddos? I just can't tell you how often that happens. And it is such a pet peeve of mine. Sorry, I'm going very specific here. But just in general, people, if we're, if we're supposed to follow the signs, they're there for a reason. It's not your moment to punk rock out and rebel. It's just courtesy. Pull your car up and go park somewhere else if you have to go into the school. And it's right. Exactly. Well, and it, it's just this narcissistic drive. It's in all of us. I'm not here to call any one person out because, yes, I have seen this many a time. But, the, but there's this narcissistic moment and it's like, I have this deep need and I feel like 99% of the time, I do the good and right thing, whatever that thing is, right? Like, I, I'll, you know, I, we all push it in different ways. Right. But there's something about the school drop off where it's like, I cannot be bothered to follow the rules. My need is so great right now. And you see, it's almost always the same people. Mm -hmm. That's the other thing I've noticed. Mm -hmm. it, I feel like it's not just like, random like oh oh look who's look who's doing it today it's someone different it's always the same people mm -hmm. who have their heads so far up their own butts that mm -hmm. that they're holding everyone else up mm -hmm. yeah yeah and they know who they are yep yep <laughs> please pull up i'm asking please you pull up. from the bottom of my heart with girlfriends of a certain age in bed life we got a lot to say, so let's get loud. We won't fade away, cause we're girlfriends of a certain age. Hey, girlfriend. Welcome to Girlfriends of a Certain Age, a podcast for women in midlife. I'm your host, Jessica Neighbor. I'm a voice coach for public speakers and vocalists at Impact Vocal Coaching. And I'm your host, Fleshe Hesh. I'm a business coach and work-life balance expert for moms. We are recovering good girls, and we are living well in midlife. Wait, Flache, what is a recovering good girl? Well, Jessica, it's someone who used to care way too much about what everyone else thought about her, and now she does not give a bleep anymore. Love it. Each week, we discuss a hot topic or hot flash, including culture, relationships, and life to help you live out loud. If you identify as a recovering good girl or as a girlfriend of any age, and you want to join our conversations, join us at Instagram, YouTube, or girlfriendsatacertainage.com. Hey, girlfriend. Hey, girlfriend. Good morning. Good morning to you. I am very excited for today's topic all about how to not be an a-hole in modern society. Really digging deep into what does it mean nowadays to be polite and have decent manners. It's so true. We can see it. The world is changing. And you and I are raising our children. You and I are both raising boys to young men. And it's complicated right now. I feel a little bit old-fashioned in some ways. Like there's a part of me holding on to an old part of life. And then I'm excited about the new ways that we are embracing life, especially after the pandemic. I yes. think we learned a lot about ourselves and each other through that process. Oh, yeah. And I think for girlfriends of a certain age, what's the new level of manners for people around our age with technology and with courtesy? Because as the world evolves, we want to evolve with it, but we also need to honor what feels just plain rude to us. And it was fun to think about this episode. You brought this one up. The inspiration is the fabulous podcast, We Can Do Hard Things with Glenn Doyle, where she talks all about the modern day manners. And so share with our listeners why you thought that was such a hot episode real quick. I found it very refreshing. I mean, Glennon tells a very personal story at the very beginning about herself and her partner. And it really got my attention. And then they just did this deep dive 
all three of the hosts just riffing on the, the idea of new rules. And of course, we're getting this from The Cut, which is a great blog post titled, Do You Know How to Behave? Are You Sure? How to Text, Tip, Ghost, Host, and Generally Exist in Polite Society Today. And the, the, the whole idea of this blog post really blew my mind. And they're using even some words that you and I were saying, is that a little bit old fashioned or antiquated? Words like polite, words mm -hmm. like behave. Mm -hmm. I, I hear like, is it Austin Powers? Like, oh, oh behave. behave. Yeah, right. And which feels judgmental. Mm -hmm. It feels, you know, triggers, I know. It triggers the good girl a little bit. Triggers the, thank you. Manners. Little girls have good manners. So, I mean, yeah, there's a lot to unpack in this episode. You and I also had a kind of funny circumstance just recently where I was, you know, working in the middle of the day and you were nearby with your boys at a park because I live right near one. And you kind of didn't know if you should make your presence known to me or not. And we all get in that position like, can I just drop by? Should I text? Should I not bother them? It's the middle of the work day. You know, and then in our funny situation, I think my husband, Paul, just happened to be outside and saw you. But I know in that moment, you had to scratch your head and go, OK, well, this is weird. What do I do? Right. It's true. And so I was thinking, well, how would I want this to be handled? I think I've had a lot of people in my life know that I work from home and, and I created my business to have all this flexibility for my children and myself, of course, and my family. But I think a lot of people have seen that as, well, Flaché will do it. Flaché's oh, yeah. home. She'll oh, yeah. cook me a meal. She'll invite me in and make me a cup of coffee or her husband will make me a cup of coffee by hand. Like there's been a lot of expectations of us. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes it's totally lovely. Mm -hmm. So it really mm -hmm. depends on the person, their intention, what's happening, how I'm feeling inside. Mm -hmm. And so I just feel like it's the whole damn thing is complicated. Yeah. Well, I love what you did. You sent a text out, but you sent it with a very clear message, which is, Hey, we're just, we just happen to be here for a few minutes. You know, we're just moving through, wanted to let you know. And that was a great clear signal to me, which was, oh, I can run out and say hello, or I can say, ah, you know, swamped with work, love ya, talk later, or just enjoy. Yeah. <laughs> Bingo. You do you, Fleshe, with your wild boys. Exactly. That, that was really, I'm so glad that you received it that way. I'm so glad we're talking about this because I feel like we're also taking care of the friendship at the same yeah. time. Yeah. Because that was my intention of just like, I'm here. I, I feel you. I'm in your proximity. I uh -huh. don't know if you're feeling me, but I wanted to let you know that I'm here. And also like we didn't have a lot of time, right. but it did. It felt good to announce that we were kind of in your metaphorical backyard. Yeah. And if there was a chance, lovely. And if there wasn't, that's lovely too. It gave me the option to, to say yes or to say no. And I will be totally honest with people that my husband and I are very different on this one. I don't love folks who just drop by and knock on the front door. It kind of rattles me. I, I'm, a, I'm a planner to a fault. And so that sort of spontaneous dropping by really throws me off for a loop. Paul, on the other hand, my husband loves it. He just thinks it's fantastic when people just spontaneously come through. And so early on in our relationship, we had to kind of find a happy medium for that, you know, so that folks weren't just showing up all the time unannounced. And so that I also could like remove the tightness in me once in a while and, and welcome that. So yeah, kind of depends. But um, we could just say that in general, if you're in the area, a little quick text might be a nice little thing to, to bring out for your girlfriend or for whoever it's it is. It's true. And I think a text is so much better than a phone call. Because yeah. a phone call, the good girl might be like, well, you're here and I'm yep. here and I'm Come on. I think that that text also gives us a little space and permission. Yes. Um, oh, someone could even say, oh, I didn't even see the text till later. <laughs> well, but yeah, that's true. People who know me know that I can be very slow to respond to text. And that's because I have my text alerts turned off mm -hmm. unless there is something special going on. I have a relative who travels a lot. And when she goes away, I'm mama bear and I'm tracking her. They often ride on motorcycles and I'm like, are you there? Are you at your destination? So I turn, she knows I turn my phone alerts on for you. It's uh -huh. a big deal. Yeah. I don't want to be bothered by text throughout the day. Just because you have a need and you want yeah. to say something yeah. doesn't mean I need to be available. I think we're already starting our our, yeah. our issues. But yeah. I can really 
that's a thing I've had to train my people on. I am well, not and sitting that, by my phone to respond. That new signal on the text is great because it shows you now. If you all notice, when you look at your text and you text someone, it'll say such and such has their texts t- messages turned off. I see that quite a, quite a while now. And what I love about that is it shifts your expectation. You, you don't see the dot, 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 right? You don't expect someone to have to respond to you in real time. So yes, we did jump into it. We're going to each share a few of our kind of hot topic issues that we feel like, you know, modern day humans should just try to do. And hey, these are our points of view. So girlfriends, if you disagree, we want to know. Hit us up. Let us know. But let's let's jump into it. Flashay, can I jump in with my first one? This one is so, so crucial to me. Okay, so I do live near a public park. So I hear a lot of people pull up in front of my house they are on their speaker phone having a private conversation i will say this happens more often with ladies i'm just gonna say it when you turn your engine off and you're sitting there in your car on your speaker phone we all will hear your conversation i never thought about it thank you for bringing that up these modern day car speakers man they are powerful They are potent and it is like eavesdropping on a private conversation. So be aware that when you park your car, my advice is to get off the speakerphone because it's just too loud and we all hear it. And it also is kind of noise pollution. I admit I'm very sensitive to sound. But if you want anything to be private about your conversation, hop off that speakerphone. That's interesting. I never speak to, to the speakerphone on my phone because I feel like it sounds like a, a tin can. It makes everyone sound terrible. And so I I love to you know, either use my earbuds or have my phone up when I'm talking to someone because I feel more intimate. So that's interesting using the, the, the car's speaker is extra, extra loud. Yeah, because sometimes you might be having a long drive and you have to have a conversation with someone. So if you don't have headphones, that's that's kind of the default. Mm -hmm. But it's a lot different when you're driving down the street than if you're like parked. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's creating a lot of awareness for certain Mm -hmm. girlfriends. So I think I can feel a little cringy across the across the community of girlfriends listening to this right now, because that's really the idea of this is to bring more awareness to ourselves and each other and to invite an opportunity to have a conversation. So that's one thing I love about podcasts. I I was not a podcast person until you and I started our podcast. Now I'm listening to a few more and it creates all these opportunities for conversation. I heard on a podcast and it creates a nice foot in the door to have some bigger conversations. Totally. All right. I want to hear one of your juicy ones. Ask before hugging. I have someone in my life, a relatively new person, who thinks that I'm like a squeeze doll. and gives hugs. And re- so I, I have a little strategy. And this person is a man, I will also say, not a relative. And but my strategy is to, you, I use both hands. And I learned this from a creepy relative, a mm-hmm. creepy male relative who likes to hug too much when I was kind of a, te- when I was a teenager. Yeah. And I learned, I put one hand up like on their chest, mm-hmm. and the other one like this, so that there's like this nice space in between mm-hmm. me. And mm-hmm. then I lean in. Now that's what when I didn't, know that I could actually just say no to hug. So are you doing that when you're greeting someone? Is that the idea that you're kind of putting your hands out to greet them? Or is this like during your conversation with them? This is when someone goes in to hug me and I'm not expecting it. Got right. It. And it, it catch me unaware. I'm trained in self-defense. Mm-hmm. So like my, my, uh, my stand actually is to be like, uh-huh. Yeah. What the hell? Oh, yeah, that's good. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> But then there's a way I can also soften it. Like if I have to, I can like go in for like a little bit of like, (laughs) you know, but I've been practicing too, like reaching out and grab the hand real fast. Mm -hmm. Uh, Good to see you too. And you can feel them like the tension of like, but I want, I want up close. Uh -uh. Uh Uh-uh. Ain't got none of that for you today, my Uh friend. So I think that's another thing too. And so I was at a, a yoga retreat this weekend. And I met this lovely woman. She was so sweet, curly hair girl like me. And we were really connecting. And at the end, we both were acknowledging the, the connection that we were really feeling each other. And she said, I don't know if you're available for it, but may I give you a hug? There you and go. And everything in me said, yes. Yes. And it was the nicest, <laughs> warmest hug. And I was fully available and present for it. It felt so good. And she, she asked, asked. Yes. yes. Because I'm a hugger. 
But I have, especially since COVID, recognized that even with my family who used to be comfortable with hugging, everyone's got a different level of comfort now about being touched. And so yeah. I think this goes into consent. This is a bigger discussion around consent, which is, thank you. And, and even to just acknowledge, like what I'll say is, I'm a hugger. You know, are you open to a hug? You know, and so that it's just a real easy answer. That, like, no or yes. And it's like, great. And I'm, I'm putting the, the emphasis on what I do. And then you can opt out of or you can come in for that bear hug. Yes. Yeah. And if I say no, yeah. don't act all like your feelings are hurt. Come, come on. on. You're trying no. to get up in my space, in my energy right. field. And I'm yeah. very protective of that. Of course. Oh, you're making me think of one other fun thing. Vanessa Van Edwards, one of my favorite people around public speaking, and she, she has this great thing all about science of people. For close talkers, who also really trigger me, have a drink. If you recognize that someone is a close talker at a party or in a work setting, have a drink and hold it between you and them. Or like Ooh. what you did with your hand. So mm. By actually having something or your phone, hold it out. And because some people have no idea how close they're getting to you, and that, that can cool. make people feel really uncomfortable. So actually putting like an object in front of you, in between you, can create the distance. So you're not, you know, I don't know if you've had this, but I've had people who keep coming forward and I keep mm -hmm. taking a step back until I'm like up against the wall. So you got to drink candy or bust your phone out. That can help in a similar way. I love that. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. I learned this energy uh, technique where you imagine a rose between you and the other person. And then you can even in instruct the rose how much space to give you in between somebody. Try that too. It's also pretty effective. It's a, like rose? Not less. a rose? A rose. Imagine oh. a rose. Your favorite color. It's open and full and fully in bloom. And it's in between the two of you. Oh, you in mean intention. like a rose a rose bush? A, a rose bush. flower, like a single, like a a single, single flower. flower. Okay. Okay. Really full and open. And energetically, yeah. its job is to receive the energy from that person. So again, like I'm very sensitive to energy. And so I've learned a lot, just like a bazillion strategies for just keeping my space clean and mm -hmm. keeping you know, basically my, my barriers up, but, mm -hmm. but using energy techniques and strategies mm -hmm. and energy medicine. And so you imagine that. And then when you're done with it, you just like imagine if this disappears or burns up or you put it in water or whatever. I, and you I, do this all the time. I feel like there are some folks who would just trample on my rose, but I love the idea. I love the suggestion of it. Well, that right. And that's interesting, too. If someone's trampling the rose, you might need some bigger thorns on that rose. You never right. know. Like I yeah. have a lot of different strategies for taking for care sure. of ourselves. OK, I have another juicy one. Hey, girlfriend. Hey, girlfriend. Oh, I just got off a call where my other girlfriend was so confused. She is in a relationship. They're at a crossroads and she's a little divorce curious at the moment. Ooh, what did you tell her? Huh, I mean, what do you tell a girlfriend? It's their decision. I just wanted to be there for her and support her, but I didn't want to tell her what to do. Well, of course. Well, it reminds me of my dear friend, Tamara Mendelssohn, who's a relationship coach and divorce expert. She's divorced herself and a mom of two, and she walks girlfriends of a certain age actually through a process of being divorce curious. Oh. Because some of us are just angry. Some of us are just feeling stuck in our relationships. But I'll give you the link and I'll leave it below for girlfriends of a certain age as well. And they can get free immediate access to this roadmap and find out from Tamara what their next steps are. Oh my gosh, that sounds so helpful. I will definitely share that link with my girlfriend. Thank you. Amazing. You're welcome. And I'll link it below for all the girlfriends listening. Awesome. Oh, I feel so much better after doing your vocal warm-ups, Jessica. Ooh, me too. I am ready now to speak on our podcast and knock out all tongue-tied. I feel more calm after doing your breath and speech exercises. You are so right to feel that way. Did you know warming up before you speak is actually scientifically proven to help you feel more calm? And how did you know this? Well, as a voice coach of 20 years, I see how helpful it is with my public speaker clients. And a public speaker is anyone who speaks in public, which includes all of our girlfriends. I never thought of it that way. Mm. If you want, you can have your own copy of my public speaker checklist so you can feel this way every day. My free gift to you. Ooh, thanks. How do I get a copy? Ooh, you just click on the link in today's show notes, sign up, and you'll instantly get your own copy. 
Mm -hmm. Thanks, girlfriend. Stay calm and speak on, girlfriend. Girlfriend, sometimes I can get so stressed, I wonder if I'm burning out. I totally understand. Burnout can be tough, but there are things you can do to prevent it. Really? Like what? Well, I'm leading a five-day challenge that will help you to unleash your potential while tackling burnout. Ah, oh, that sounds amazing. How does it work? Each day, you and I will focus on a different aspect of your life that's causing you stress. You'll learn how to manage your time better, how to say no to things, and how to take better care of yourself. That sounds fab. Just like what I need as a recovering good girl. Yep. The challenge is free, so there's no risk in trying it. You can find the link in today's show notes. Ooh, I'm going to sign up right now. Yay! I'm so glad to hear it. You and I can kick burnout together. What's that? This is really a request when I'm with girlfriends, which is for us to not weight bond. Not weight bond. Tell me more about weight bonding. Weight bonding is something that girlfriends often do, which is to talk about their weight. Usually they're unhappy about it. And it's a way to kind of bond and commiserate about a topic that you might have in common. Oh my gosh, I'm just so fat. Oh, I know I gained five pounds over the winter time. Oh, I've been eating so horribly. And I think that it's been this acceptable way to bond. That as I'm becoming more aware of different body types, you know, different fat positivity, it's really assuming something that someone else wants to talk about. And I guess I've shifted. I think I said in my New Year's resolution episode with you that I'm no longer weighing myself. I'm really trying to get away from some of those, you know, stats around weight. And this might be something with girlfriends that I can just comfortably say, hey, I'm not really trying to talk about weight. But I think that in general, as a society, we should just knock that off. We don't know where people are coming from. We don't know what their health situation is. We don't know what lifestyle challenges are happening. And I do think it's a way that a, many girlfriends find a way to bond over. And I think we could come up with other cool things to bond over. Absolutely. Right. Like that our bodies are like the least interesting thing about us. Yeah. Right. And so I, I think in general, even saying anything about anybody's body is, is old fashioned. I had a relative do that like months after I had my second baby. Oh, well, you managed to be relatively thin. And I just looked at her and I was just like, you. And I wished I, at the time I had said something because I'm teaching my children, we don't talk about people's bodies. And we don't do that. You don't want anyone doing that to you. So don't do it to other people. That's, that's really rude. I think, really rude. I think people just do it and they mean it in a good way. Oh, you look so great after your baby. Or how about the compliment? Oh, you look like you didn't even have a baby. It's really loaded. And I don't think people intend it to be mean or cruel. But I agree with you, commenting on someone's body, especially related to their weight, is just funky. Yeah. So don't do it. Let's not do it. Let's it's, just not do it. Yeah. It's a hard no. It's a hard no. And, and, and how do we find, you know, gracious ways of communicating that to people? Yeah. Right? And I think now that I am teaching my children so much about how we don't do that, I am... I don't want to say I'm excited for the opportunity, but I would love to model that for them. So I do, I have set the intention for myself that the next person who does that to me, mm -hmm. I will say, oh, we, we, you know, in our family, we don't talk about people's bodies. Mm -hmm. I do want to say that. Yeah. So bring it, someone bring it. Let me, let me flex that muscle <laughs> so I can, so I can say it. It's partly corrective and healing for me to be able to do that, but I do want to model it for my children. Mm -hmm. We don't do that. And we can name that when someone is being an a-hole and is being inappropriate, we name that. We mm -hmm. don't sit by and wring our hands anymore as uh, recovering good girls. Now we name it. Oh, that's body shaming. Oh, that's talking about people's bodies. We don't do that. Nope. 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 We just don't. We just don't. I got a little fired up on that one. Okay. Good. Uh, All right, honey. What you got? What you got for us? So this one's a little personal for me. But, you know, when you meet somebody and you, you find them interesting or you think they're exotic or unusual, 
Mm. Don't ask where they're from. And then when they answer you, then don't ask again, but where are you really from? So I get this quite a bit. I, you know, I have an unusual look. People are very intrigued. I have an, an unusual name. Mm. What does it mean? Where's it from? Oh, it's French. Are you French? Are you French? <laughs> yes, that would help me out a lot. I could understand people who are French have olive skin. And I think there's a lot of anxiety mm. that my appearance brings up in other people. And so I have been asked way too many damn times, more so when I was young, and I would fall for it every time. Where are you from? Well, Oakland. Where are your parents from? Berkeley. But where are their parents from? Oh, my goodness. You know, it's like, how far back do you want to go, Ben? Yeah. I mean, right. I can do this. I can play this game all day with you. And I feel that. But now, you know, now I just, I like, when they start asking too many questions, why do you ask? Oh, uh, well. You know, and I soften my belly. Mm -hmm. And then I let them stink up the joint mm -hmm. with their either racist or inappropriate or trying to exotic size me. Is that a, that's not, that's not a word. Exotic size. But trying to make me be so other. Yeah. I'm not having it. Mm -hmm. That's just tacky and it's rude. I'm far more. Or like, and it, whatever I want to share about myself, I will share when I feel safe with you. And you grilling me about where I'm from and where my people are from, that's not going not gonna to win you over with me. Good. Have you ever found people, if they don't ask you directly, have you found them trying to guess in other ways? Like, oh, yes. Uh, Oh, yeah. yeah. All yeah. the time. And, you know, it, it does come up. And I do know I have an unusual look and I do know I have an unusual name. And, and I'm really proud of these things about myself now. And so, like, in my business, you know, I will find little ways that I feel comfortable sharing. Right. Like, oh, yeah, my name is French. No, I'm not French. Yes, I get asked that all the time. Next topic. You yeah, know, I'll just right. move on. I move right. us through to address a little something about it. Um, but, yeah. Yeah it, yeah, it gets real weird real fast. And that, and it's also just not polite. It doesn't make me feel welcome. No. When you keep asking me where I'm from, I don't feel welcome in your presence. Right. It, well, it objectifies you, and it's people trying to size you up and figure you out. And hopefully, as we're all getting more mixed, people can knock that off. Because, you know, it's like you're unusual to whom? You know, to what Thank standards, you. right? Yes. And I mean, at least here in the Bay Area, I feel like everyone is like so many of the younger generations now are mixed, you know? So it's like, you want to ask me where I'm from or what I am? You know, like kids are going to be like, well, do you have an hour? Oh, well, let me list off. So yeah, that that really does poke at this this funky thing. So thank you. Thank you for sharing that with us. Really, really important to just not even go there. Yeah. Yep. People are going to share what they want to share. Absolutely. In good time. In good time. What okay. you got? What's your next one? Okay. I got one for parents. This is a gripe. <laughs> this is about the school carpool drop off. Oh, Lord. Okay. Oh. Well, I drop off my middle schooler. My high schooler, he gets himself to school. Love him. But my, you know, the other one lives, we're, we're far enough away. I got to drive him. Okay, adults, we're supposed to be adulting in front of our kids. You will see in the carpool lane people who don't pull up, even though there's like eight car spaces, or who flat out park in the carpool drop-off lane when there are pure signs up and down that say, do not park, please pull up. And it's like this hilarious thing that you see play out. It's like the same thing on airplanes when people are just all like, making a mad dash for the front door it's just like patience people and what are we showing our kiddos i just can't tell you how often that happens and it is such a pet peeve of mine sorry i'm going very specific here but just in general people if we're if we're supposed to follow the signs they're there for a reason it's not your moment to punk rock out and rebel it's just courtesy pull your car up and go park somewhere else if you have to go into the school. And it's right. Exactly. Well, and it, it's just this narcissistic drive. It's in all of us. I'm not here to call any one person out. Because, yes, I have seen this many a time. That the, But there's this narcissistic moment. And it's like, I have this deep need. And I feel like 99% of the time, I do the good and right thing. Whatever that thing is, right? Like, I, I'll, you know, I, and we all push it in different ways. Right. But there's something about the school drop-off where it's like, 
I cannot be bothered to follow the rules. My need is so great right now. And you see, it's almost always the same people. Mm -hmm. That's the other thing I've noticed. Mm -hmm. it, I feel like it's not just like random, like, oh, oh, look who's, look who's doing it today. It's someone different. It's always the same people mm -hmm. who have their heads so far up their own butts mm -hmm. that, that they're holding everyone else up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And they know who they are. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Please pull up. I'm asking Please you pull up. from the bottom of my heart. Not that I think most of our listeners do that, but you know, we all have our moments. We've all had our emergencies. I get it. There've been one or two times where I've had to do something jerky too. And you know, if it's that kind of situation, fine. But if it is a habitual thing, come on now. Just pull up. Woo! Do you feel better, honey? I do. I do. Because I'm not trying to start a, you know, parent parking lot fight. But I would love for everybody just to well the ball. I love it. Well, my next one is kind of broad, hmm. but it feels like I, I have a lot that I want to say about it. But in a nutshell, I would like for us as people, as a society, especially as parents, to stop gaslighting each other. And by gaslighting, I mean not allowing someone to have their reality, not allow them to have their feelings and to tell them that their feelings are wrong or somehow crazy or to make them feel crazy. And a good example of this would be I'm at the park with my children and the, there's a leash law where I live and someone's off-leash dog gets up in our space and I tell you to get them out of my space. And then you tell me, but my dog is friendly. It's okay. Oh. Girl, man, sir, boy, whoever you are, it is not okay. You are breaking the leash law. Mm -hmm. And if I tell you to get your damn dog out of my face, mm -hmm. get your damn dog out of my face, because I've got pepper spray and I will use it. Mm -hmm. You know, my kids don't want to be around off leash dogs. I want to protect them from that. And boy, is it frustrating. But we do it to kids and each other all the time. Don't cry. There's nothing to be sad about. Mm -hmm. You know, everything's fine. It is not. If the other person is crying or unhappy or sad, another good one is you're too sensitive. Ugh. Right? We do, people do this all the time. It was done to them. It was done to us. We're doing it to other people. It's mm -hmm. time to stop. Allow people to have their feelings mm -hmm. because you're only adding more trauma to their lives. It's so, so true. It absolutely is. It's interesting. I'll see that happen with dog owners a lot. I'm a dog owner, you know, and actually my husband and I had a debate about that because he used to want to walk Tico, our big dog, off leash around our neighborhood. And he would say a similar thing to people. Oh, he's friendly. Don't worry. And I really had a big debate with him because I was like, you know what? We're not being responsible dog owners. It is really not acceptable to walk your dog down the street off leash, even if he is the most well-behaved dog, because you have no idea what other people feel like about your dog. You have no idea what the situation is, and it kind of puts the responsibility on them. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. To be like, oh, you can just chill out. Don't be sensitive. Don't be fearful, because my dog is cool, right? And also, sorry, but I've been around enough dog owners who say that about their dog, and then their dog flashes out, right? Yes. It, and so we do. I think, I think like dog owners sometimes have this pride about their dog as if they're their their children, and then we start getting into all of that like narcissistic stuff. But yes, I think we just as common decent humans need to have our dogs on leash unless we are at an off leash place. If we're at an off leash place, then my feeling as a dog owner is have your dog off leash. And it drives me crazy in those settings when people say, can you leash your dog? I'm like, no, there's a gazillion places you can go, which are, which are leash places. This is off leash. So, but that's a whole other topic. So I hear you. I feel you. I back that up 100%. Even as a proud dog owner who calls my dog, my third furry son. Oh, uh, well, thank you for that. It's very corrective and healing for me because I've definitely had this conversation with dog owners who have debated with me. And my mic drop moment is it's violating the leash law. You know, mm -hmm. I need to have safe spaces where I can take my children and not be worried. I love that. I love that. All right. Well, we've got just a couple more each. One of these is to actually defend my husband, who is a carpenter. He works in construction. 
I have had an illuminating, eye-opening experience being the wife of a carpenter because I hear how he is treated by homeowners and how I, frankly, used to catch myself thinking about construction workers, especially when I saw them stop in traffic and building something in the middle of the road. You know how that happens? Yes. And they're, you know, guiding you around and they made you wait three extra minutes and it's uh, so annoying. <laughs> now, being the wife of one of these people, it's like, do you want to do the work? Do you want to fix that, you know, utility line? Do you want to rebottle that house? Be my guest. Someone's got to do it. And I think what we really are seeing is that there's a classism in there. And so I just want everyone to recognize that when there are people working on the road, they're just doing their jobs. They are really not trying to mess your day up and stop traffic, believe me. And if someone is building a house, even your house, treat them with decency. Do they make noise? Yes. Is that how houses get built? Yes. And super bonus tip, if you are remodeling your own house or having your house worked on, a little kindness goes a long way. When Paul and his crew have people offer them some lemonade on a hot day, or maybe bake them a batch of cookies, or just offer them, you know, any kind of like friendly offering. Let me tell you what a difference that makes. And what happens is sometimes there's so much money and stress in home builds that you are seeing people, you know, on their worst day, or you're, you know, you're there at 7.30 in the morning. It can become a really tricky relationship. But I think that common decency, common courtesy with our carpenters is going to go a long, long way. Oh, I love that. I can feel a few people leaning forward on that and questioning, oh, what, man, have I been kind? Have I been generous? Have I treated people badly? It's, it's a painful reality in 2023, I think, for a lot of people that we do, we do treat people badly based on classist thinking and behavior and beliefs and prejudices. And I mean, just be a good person. Treat everybody with kindness and respect. I mean, that just sounds so painful because I'm sure Paul and his crew are working their tails off. I know they do beautiful work. And to be treated not as a respected team, that just makes me feel sick. Well, but a funny, a funny side note about this is he gets it. He knows that they're showing up at someone's personal house and tearing it apart and making dust and making noise. So, you know, it is a little bit of a, you know, tricky relationship. He gets that part, but really they're doing their job. So at the end of the day, try to be graceful. Try not to have your stress about your build pour over onto them. But girl, I'll admit it. When he helped remodel our own kitchen, I was getting grouchy with him. Oh, I was also pregnant with Finn and waddling down to our basement where we had like a makeshift, you know, kitchen set up. But I was like, how much longer is this? You know, so it, it's human nature. Don't take it out on the workers. They're there doing their job. Believe me, they want to get it done as fast as possible as well. Absolutely. Well, these give me so much to think about. And honestly, I feel better getting to say my gripes out loud. I sure do. This is all about us living out loud and not giving as much of a shit anymore. So that's so, so funny. Great. I'm thinking right now, my husband will attest to this, that I do something I call open letters. And so I write these letters as if I'm going to like publish them to someplace big and important. And I just let loose. And it started with an Airbnb we stayed at a long, long time ago that was like just crummy. It had like four forks and four knives and I'm like, and no dishwashers. I'm like washing the silverware the whole time. And I got so frustrated. I looked over and there was a tip jar and my first open letter was written. And so like getting to do this on my own podcast with you and get some stuff off my chest feels so damn good. I feel like I have this little corrective moment and for myself, a little healing. So thank you for doing this with me. I love it. 
Absolutely. It's so fun. I think that we as recovered good girls need to speak our truth, right? And, you know, maybe don't shy away from it with your friends because it helps us all too. If we're doing something that pisses off the people in our life, oh, let's not do it. So yes to all of this. It was really fun. It was really fun to vent openly with you it really as well. Was. And I learned a few things. Thank you. Yeah, well, I did too. And I really want to hear how the girlfriends have addressed this or what gripes do you have, girlfriends? Leave us oh, a yeah. comment, send us an email, join our online community because we want to hear from you. And, you know, honestly, I feel like there will be more episodes like this. Yes. So bring us your gripes, girls, because we, we want to air them because it will feel healing for you, too, to get it off your chest. And maybe you don't want to say it out loud to a bunch of people, but you still want the message out there. We'll do it for you. Oh, love that idea. Absolutely. We'll be your mouthpieces. Love it. And thank oh. you so much for hanging out with us today. As always, we just love getting to do this, getting to share our opinions and, you know, share it with the collective. We really think that it's meaningful. And if you think so as well, if you could show us a little love by rating and subscribing to our pod, it really does make a huge difference. It'll make us more visible for more girlfriends of a certain age. So thank you so much today. Bye, girlfriend. Bye. Thank you for hanging out with us today on Girlfriends of a Certain Age. Do you have a girlfriend who needs to hear today's message? Share this episode with her. She will love you forever. If you enjoyed today's talk, subscribe to our channel on Spotify, Apple, or YouTube so you never miss another episode. You can help us reach even more girlfriends when you take 30 seconds and leave us a five-star rating on Spotify and Apple or a comment on YouTube. Stay tuned for more episodes where we discuss more hot topics about girlfriends living our best lives. Follow us on Instagram, YouTube, and girlfriendsofacertainage.com.